Okay, this video is dedicated to Derek Dewin. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Thank you for the contribution. This is about uh, preserving uh, some dry foods like rice and beans and seasonings and grits. So uh, <clears throat> I bought some of the equipment a while ago and I had to get foreshadowed that I was going to be doing this video. I've had it planned, but we just been so doggone busy with the... Uh, gardening and everything else. So I finally had a chance. I had one of my friends come over. He he had a whole bunch of rice we needed to uh, uh, preserve for him as well. So let me give you a little background. Um, I researched many months ago, I think it was probably even in the winter time, about the best preservation approaches for doing this. And uh, there are several things you have to consider. So one of them is you want to avoid like a bug infestation. And sometimes when you buy things from like a whole food store, the uh, the rice or the grits or something may already be infested, but it's like a larval or egg type stage. So you have to make sure that you uh, are able to neutralize those things so that they don't grow. So I've considered that. Another thing is your house could have an infestation of these bugs that could contaminate your food. So you need to protect from having that infestation. The other thing is you need to protect against rodents. And so all of these things come to mind. And, you know, moisture is a big killer. Sunlight's a big killer, you know, for, I don't mean killer, but I mean for food preservation. It's a problem for affecting your food preservation. So I think I've taken all these things into consideration. And I've, I saw some things where people were doing uh, particular deals and it, it, it didn't appeal to me for a number of reasons. So I'll walk through the different options and let you know why I did what I did. But all right. So the first thing is, <clears throat> I think Mylar bags are mandatory. You need to get these Mylar bags and you need to get a seam sealer. The Mar Mylar bags are not terribly expensive. You can get them on Amazon. I know some people are using these uh, uh, mason jars, but those are actually terribly expensive compared to Mylar bags. You know, mason jars typically are around a dollar or a little more a quart size jar. And uh, you can get these Mylar bags for 20, 30 cents a piece. And there's some pretty um, sexy ones they have now that have uh, Ziplocs and even pleated bottoms so they can sit flat and, and all this. So it's, it's pretty dang slick. Um, secondly, the seam sealers are inexpensive. The one I bought, I'm thinking it was only like 29 bucks. I'm going to try to find all this stuff and put it in the description for you so that you can uh, see what I came up with. Um, <clears throat> some people will, will only um, put their rice in a bag with a oxygen absorber and then seal it up. But um, I saw another option where somebody had used... Um, dry ice. They take a chunk of dry ice, they put it in the bottom of the bag, they throw the rice in there, and then they you'd have to wait for this uh, dry ice to evaporate, and that creates carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide, the purpose of using that is it uh, depletes the oxygen in the bag, and it would uh, not allow, remember some of the larval things I talked about, you know, basically so you wouldn't have a bug infestation in your bag. Now, the problem I didn't like with dry ice, dry ice is something you can't handle with your hand because it's too cold. You'll actually get like a frostbite. And it's it's a little bit of a safety issue. And the, the other thing that I didn't like about dry ice is if you think about it, you make your, your bottom of your bag extremely cold, you're going to be drawing in moisture. So you would have to, uh, uh, you know, be careful about that. So I wasn't real thrilled with that. And I think that... Uh, um, I think there's a better option that I've come up with. So my option was actually to get uh, dry nitrogen. You can pick up a bottle from, uh, I think Matheson is one of the places where it's Matheson gas, and then there's Airco and a couple others. But uh, usually they're like welding supply houses. And uh, I found a medium-sized bottle that's still pretty easy to handle, I was able to strap it down in the bed of my truck and I got it home and I also bought a, a uh, regulator that uh, I ordered a special gauge, a low pressure gauge on the one side because again, you're going to be using hardly any gas out of this. And 
you know, so going back to the carbon dioxide, it's like uh, my freezer doesn't create carbon dioxide or uh, dry ice. So you have to go buy it somewhere. Well, with this nitrogen, I've got a bottle that probably will last me a decade or more for what I'm trying to do. So think about that. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I did it. So when you put the dry nitrogen in the bag, there is no cooling effect. So you don't end up with the moisture, but you still have the, the opportunity to displace all of the um, oxygen in there and also moisture at the same time because it's dry nitrogen. You don't have the uh, sweating effect that you have from something super cool like the carbon dioxide. So this is a much better approach and much safer. You don't have any problems with, uh, you know, handling or anything that's going to be super cold. Now, uh, using nitrogen, again, the small, remember the air already has like 70% nitrogen, extremely high percentage. Uh, but the idea is you don't want to be using this bottle in a very confined space in case you had a major leak. You could potentially suffocate, but that, that's if you displace all the oxygen. Now, I have extremely huge basement. Again, I'm I'm only using a very small percentage, so I think the risk is extremely low for that, so keep that in mind. Now, as far as uh, rodent protection, so there's uh, we've already talked about how you do the bags, and so I actually had chose to do the, uh, you know, mylar bags, uh, nitrogen, dry nitrogen that is, and oxygen absorbers, and then a seam sealer. So then you got to put the bags in something. So going the cheapest way you can, you can use totes. Like some people, they want to put stuff under their bed. They may not have a big storage area. Um, and you also have to, uh, for the rice to be able to, or beans or whatever you're doing, for it to last the longest amount of time, you want to be able to have it in a controlled environment. Don't put this stuff in your garage. So some people have a raised bed. You can stick these things underneath your bed. So totes work well for that. So you can take, you know, these gallon size bags, fill them with rice and uh, put them in a tote. And uh, you probably could put, you know, probably 100 pounds of rice in each tote. Uh, kind of like, you know, the totes you see at Home Depot where you put uh, Christmas decorations in and stuff like that. So you can mix them up with rice or beans or whatever. Um, a better approach, next step up, is use the five-gallon buckets with the seals from Home Depot. And those are, each five-gallon bucket can hold maybe 25 to 30 pounds of rice. And, you know, each one-gallon bag, one gallon bag, mylar bag, holds about five pounds of rice. So that tells you how many bags you're going to put in there. But there's a lid that you bang down from Home Depot that seals up, and so you're your uh, rodents aren't going to be able to get in there. I prefer the, uh, uh, what's the thing called? Hold on a second. I had to look on the video, the gamma seal lids. I prefer these gamma seal lids. So if you go to Home Depot and you get the five gallon bucket with their lid that they have there, you're going to spend five bucks. But if you go and get the gamma seal lid and you add the cost of the bucket, you're probably spending maybe eight to 10 bucks, let's say. So, but the advantage of the gamma seal lid, again, we're, we're not necessarily trying to keep moisture out because we've already done the uh, uh, mylar bags. That's going to keep moisture out. It's, it's also going to keep, uh, you know, gnats and everything else trying to infest your food. So the buckets themselves are mainly to keep rodents out. And the gamma seal lid has a, a inner uh, lid. So you bang this thing on, but the inner lid unscrews, and so you can get to your contents very easily. So I love the Gamma Seal lids for that. So anyways, that's the idea. So simplest thing is, uh, I, I still would argue, everybody needs to use the Mylar bags with the seam sealer. Everybody should consider, you know, oxygen absorbers. If you want to do the belts and suspenders, go with the dry nitrogen, because then you're not going to have any uh, infestation at all. And then lastly, um, anywhere from tote to five-gallon buckets to gamma seal. That's the range of what I would recommend. All right, so let's go to the video. I can't think of anything else. So this is like the pre-lead-in, tells you what I came up with, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, anyways, I was able to get about 30 pounds of rice per five-gallon bucket, and I was able to do 25 pounds of grits per five-gallon bucket. And then I'm still trying to do a bunch of seasoning, so I'm not quite sure how many seasonings fit in there yet. But then I'll be doing some uh, beans 
over the next uh, couple days as well. So I'll uh, give you a report as I keep going, but I hope everybody's treating you well. Okay, today we are going to preserve uh, some dried foods like uh, uh, rice and grits, but also some seasonings. Don't just go buy rice, you know, hundreds of pounds of rice and not get some seasoning. I'm sorry, I'm not Asian. I don't like rice by itself. It's pretty dang boring. And I want to show you like a road gallery of some different storage things. So if you want to go hog wild, you know, get yourself five gallon buckets and get these gamma seals. If you go to tractor supply, I think one bucket and one gamma seal lid is less than $10. And then you go on to Amazon and I'm going to show you the labels on these things. So I've got a uh, hundred of these uh, 50 gallon uh, Mylar bags and they come with the desiccants in there. Silica gel desiccant oxygen absorbers. And then I got some uh, a bunch of these quart size. I kind of wish I'd have bought the two quart size as a step in between. I may end up uh, going ahead and doing this. So down the road, I'll go ahead and buy some half gallon. And then these didn't come with the desiccant, so I ordered these separately. So I've got the desiccants here. Now, you got to think when you take and you're going to do a, five, a one gallon bag of rice or even grits in this case, you're going to put uh, probably three or four of those, probably four max in a five gallon container. So when you go to take and break open a one gallon bag for eating purposes, you need to have this other kind of storage container. And they sell these at Sam's Club. There's two of them. They're probably like four bucks a piece or something. So I've got a pile of these. And the nice thing about these is these are clear so you can see what you've got. I forgot to also say they do make uh, Mylar bags with a Ziploc. So I picked up some of those to try them out. And that's what these quart size are. They cost a little more. They also do have some flat bottom ones that should probably be nice when you're trying to fill everything up. But truthfully, I was going to use these uh, six quart uh, pots to put my bags in while we're filling them up. And I think that might help. And then I'm going to show you later what we do. But another thing you want to do is if you don't have the funds to be able to buy these tractor supply buckets, which by the way, not terribly expensive, you can put the things into Mylar bags with the desk kit, and then you can use totes if you wanted to. And Home Depot has another option where you can get the uh, buckets with the lids. How much were the buckets and lids? Five. Five bucks total for, for both? the lid and the bucket. Okay, so it's a little cheaper to just get these snap-on lids. Now I'm going to tell you right now, these aren't nearly as convenient as the um, gamma seal lid because once you snap this on, this part right here unscrews and you don't have to try to pop off that thing. But there is a tool that you can pop those lids off. Okay, so why don't we, uh, and then the last thing is this impulse sealer. So you got to pick up one of these and these will seal these uh, Mylar bags. And then the other thing is... I've got a nitrogen bottle that I'm going to actually purge my bags out with nitrogen first to get any moisture out, get any of the uh, oxygen out. And so I've got a uh, regulator, but I've also bought a special low pressure side so that I can see how much I'm pushing through. You're, you're going to be using hardly anything. I've got a clear hose that I'm going to put like a bicycle needle on. And uh, again, you're just pushing just a little bit of nitrogen through. And that's, uh, so that's, that's the process we're going to go through today. So let me get started and I'll show you how it works. Okay, now we've got the nitrogen tank out here. We've fitted the gauge and we changed out the, uh, the outlet on this to a barb fitting so that I could put a three quarter inch OD, quarter inch ID, clear vinyl hose and then you might recognize what this is on the end. It's just a needle for like filling up a basketball if I can get it to focus. There it goes. Because you're just going to use just a little bit of airflow. So we're going to find out if this works. I may have to put a hose clamp on here. So we'll find out in a second if that's necessary. All right. So what we've done is we've got the uh, tank now operating at about uh, three and a half, four PSI. And we stuck the hose down in the bottom of the rice and it's been purging for about 30, 40 seconds. So we're going to take this out now. And we just tested the seam sealer. It works perfectly. And so we're going to take an oxygen absorber and go ahead and throw that in there. Just belts and suspenders. And then we'll have the first gallon completed. So that's what we're going to do next. 
All right, so what we've done is we've sealed the bag. It's perfectly sealed, and we marked the bag with today's date, and we marked it that it's rice. And so I'm thinking we may be able to get like four or five of these. I don't know how many are going to fit in here, but we're going to fill it up with a bunch of one-gallon bags. That's actually a perfect size for, for rice. Now, at a 25-pound bag or 20-pound bag, we filled up four of these Mylar bags. So you got about uh, five pounds per bag of rice. It's a pretty good amount. So I think this is going to work out great. So not only have we uh, sealed the bags with nitrogen, we're actually now purging the bucket out, you know, after we put the bags in with nitrogen, and then we're going to clamp the seal on. And that'll also just be an added level of protection. Shut it off. All right, I wanted to show you how the seam sealer works. This works really good. You just take it to where the, you make the, the mylar bag as flat as possible, and then move your fingers back just a little bit and then we hold this thing down you'll see a light come on and when it goes off it's done that's all it is and it's perfectly sealed now I did notice that there's a tear part right on here so you want to seal above that tear part because that's for opening the bag that makes it easier for opening so this bag is perfectly sealed it's got nitrogen in there instead of air and we also have an oxygen absorber Right, so I started uh, bagging up some of these uh, five pound bags of grits that you get from uh, Sam's Club. They come in a three pack, so 15 pounds, and they're really inexpensive, just like the rice is. And it turns out the one gallon bags, Mylar bags, hold five pounds of rice perfectly. So we've already done two full buckets of uh, rice, and I'm working on my third one now. So this is uh, fantastic. So again, you just stick the hose in here, you turn on the gas. And I usually leave it in there for about uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Then I put an oxygen absorber, and then we seal it right away. And then the last thing we do is before we uh, put the lid on the bucket, we actually put the nitrogen in the bucket as well. So it's, it's working great. So far we've done uh, three buckets of rice, which is about 30 pounds, and we're doing uh, about 25 pounds of grits in each bucket as well. All right, I wanted to show you, I started uh, packaging up some of my yellow rice seasoning and these, uh, these bags that I bought that are quart size, these are actually perfect for seasoning and this holds uh, 30, so it's 15 of these double bags. So each one of these are a pack of seasoning. There's actually two packs connected here, sorry. And uh, so I was able to get 30 of those packs inside this and it's got a, a pleating on the bottom so it expands out and stands up. You can see like that one standing up right there. But then it has a, a zip lock on the top which is nice and so I sealed above the tear mark right here using my seam sealer. And so that works great. So now I've got, I put nitrogen in there, I put an oxygen absorber. So this uh, package is good for years and years. I gotta put the date on here still. So another thing that I was doing in the past was taking some of these ham beans, which I use for navy bean soup, which has a seasoning packet, and I put the instructions in here and everything. But this is a pretty expensive uh, way to store beans. So these uh, bags that I was using for the uh, um, seasonings, these will actually work perfectly. They're quart size, they're Ziploc, they're pleated on the bottom. So I'll be able to, I think these bags are maybe 30 cents versus taking up a jar that costs a lot of times a little bit over a dollar. So uh, this is going to be a much more cost effective way. And again, I'll be sealing them with nitrogen and one of the uh, uh, oxygen absorbers as well. So we'll get an excellent uh, preservation. But uh, so that's, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. I got to go get a bunch more of these uh, ham beans. I wish I had a bulk source. I gotta look around and see if I can't find these northern ham beans because, man, they're great to use with ham and any kind of beans. Stretching out the navy bean soup that I made already, 